Well, to discuss these two latest outbreaks of Hendra virus, I'm joined now by Dr Barry Smith of the Australian Veterinary Association. Dr Smith, the Queensland authorities say it is unusual to have two separate outbreaks of Hendra virus. You know, they're so far apart geographically. Do you have any insight into why this might be happening? Well, we do know that uh, flying foxes are in uh, various parts of Queensland and we do also know that every flying fox population around Australia does carry evidence of Hendra virus infection. So it's entirely possible that we could get uh, outbreaks uh, 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 wide apart uh, depending on where the flying fox populations are. The Queensland authorities are also saying that there seems to be outbreaks at this time of year, although there's a risk all year round. It seems to be that this time of year that there's more of a, of a, of a prevalence of this virus. Yeah, it's of serious concern that we've had two Hendra virus outbreaks, but uh, between May and November is the period when we do see increased numbers of outbreaks, but uh, it can occur at any time of the year, but this is the time of year when we expect to see more of them. This is a virus that has been around for a while, and Queensland's chief vet says it really hasn't changed a lot. Um, is it frustrating, though, that there's still a lot, not a lot of understanding about how it's actually spread and, and why? Yes, we've had uh, Hendra virus around since 1994 and there's been a lot of research done so we know a lot more now than we did then, but there's still a lot we need to learn. Uh, we do know that flying foxes uh, are able to carry this virus and not show any signs of illness. Uh, we also know that there's no direct transmission from flying foxes to people. It seems that it has to go through horses. And last year we had a dog uh, with signs of reaction to a Hendra virus infection. So uh, there's a lot we need to learn. Uh, we do think that uh, the transmission is through droplet infection, so it's very important that uh, anybody around a sick horse takes all precautions possible to prevent contamination. Well, you talk about taking precautions. Certainly the vet who responded to the case of the Hendra virus uh, near Rockhampton on the weekend, he's praised the property owners, saying they did all the right things. They isolated the horse fairly quickly. They took a lot of precautions. Do you think the message has now well and truly gotten through to not only vets but people who own horses uh, that they must act as soon as they think an animal is sick? Yes, there's been a lot of effort put in uh, the last few years by governments and industry and the Australian Veterinary Association to educate veterinarians and horse owners about the dangers of hendrovirus transmission. Uh, any sick horse could uh, be a possible candidate for a hendrovirus infection and so you need to be very careful around uh, horses, particularly if you know that your horse is an area where flying foxes do populate or whether they might come onto the property to feed. Uh, so it's important that you do take all precautions with a sick horse and get your veterinarian to look at it as soon as possible. When you say take precautions, give us a couple of quick examples of those sorts of precautions. Well, if you've got a sick horse, you need to uh, put on protective clothing and gloves. And if the horse has uh, got any signs of a discharge, maybe even protective goggles. Um, so you need to do that before you go near the sick horse and uh, afterwards immediately to remove all the contaminated clothing and uh, thoroughly wash down. And of course the key would be to try to prevent a horse from getting sick in the first place. What does that involve to try to keep them away from flying foxes? Try to keep, you know, feed etc away from trees where flying foxes might rest? Yes, we think that uh, a major way that horses become infected uh, with Hendra virus is contamination of food and water containers. So it's important that you prevent horses having access to those areas where flying foxes might roost in trees. And that might need a, a permanent fencing or temporary fencing if you've got trees that are uh, in fruit or flower only particular times of the year. It's also important never to put uh, feed bins or water bins under uh, flying fox trees. Uh, take, keep them right away from there and also do not put out any feed that might be attractive to flying foxes with fruit and vegetables and things like that in the horse's feed.